Okay, we're back. We're live in San Francisco. Uh, we have two, two events going on, one in Vegas, uh, EMC World, and one here in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's exclusive coverage of the Hadoop ecosystem. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com, and I'm joined here with the new VP uh, of Marketing, Peter Ellis Cooper. Cooper Ellis. Cooper Ellis. Cooper Ellis. Uh, congratulations on you. your new uh, role. Uh, you're taking okay. over the v, as the VP of Engineering from Amar Awadallah, who will maintain the CTO position. You guys uh, yeah. announced that news today? Yep, I went out this morning. So uh, Cloudera now has grown to have hundreds and hundreds of employees. I'll, there's no official statement on the number, but through my extensive research, I'm pegging the number at 250 plus, <laughs> give or take 10. <laughs> 260 That's maybe? pretty close. Very close, <laughs> I'm almost, you know. Um, I've been involved in Cloudera since they were founded. I got to know the founders early on at the office. So watching right. Cloudera grow up has been a great uh, uh, experience for me and got to know a lot of good friends there. And so Amar Awadala as the founder, uh, managing engineering. You know, I noticed he was kind of stressed out last time I was in the office. <laughs> uh, he was working late and you know, as the founder, you know, it's, that's a lot of engineering going on. A lot of, you know, close to 70 plus engineers I hear. Um, yeah, well, and his busy schedule. He was the first guy I met when I went in there. Yeah, great. We talked for hours. It was great. Amar's a fantastic founder, great technical founder, great, great individual, great integrity. Um, big fan of Amar. Um, but let's talk about Cloudera's engineering environment. Obviously, uh, you don't, you really can't add much. You're only two days on the job. Second day. Um, but you know, you've had to go through the interview process. You've been vetted. I'm sure you talked to the board members. I'm sure you talked to all the personnel there. Um, and it's, it's a tough hire, at Cloudera. I know, I know people in the past in other positions, they've had great candidates and yep. sometimes it's not a good fit. So talk about what's happening at Cloudera that got you so excited to, to leave your job at VMware uh, to come here. Yeah, um, you know, it's a great opportunity, obviously, right? And uh, I've been working in the middleware space, which is kind of you know adjacent space for years, and and got really interested in the interaction of data and, and, and apps. And I started looking at how they were scaling across commodity hardware to build out these Hadoop clusters, and started looking at wow, there's a lot of data out there. And you know the opportunity to help customers be successful with that was really what started me on this whole thing. Um, and then when I got in, I met Armor, and I started meeting the guys in the team. I was like, these guys are building a team that's built to last. Yeah. And that's what really got me excited. I did the first video. It was kind of a recruiting video in our first Cube Studio. I had these hanging balls from IKEA in the back of the Cloud Air office, and <laughs> it was Chad, who's now at Wibby Data, Charles, and Armor, and Eli. And um, they talk about how great it was of the culture, and that video is still on their website, I believe. And um, they've continued to build that DNA in the culture uh, of Cloudera, high-quality individuals, um, and they've attracted some real mm -hmm. high-end scientists and computer scientists. So uh, they've done a good job. Okay, let's talk about what you've done. Okay, so you worked sure. at SpringSource, a very famous acquisition by VMware. Right. When Paul Moritz came over to VMware, VMware was basically a almost like an Oracle model. You know you know, license, you know, focused on the enterprise. Back when virtualization, that's all they could do is charge for licenses. Right. And you know, it did and that wasn't going over well. As virtualization started growing, you know, customers are unhappy paying for licenses for VMware. Paul right. Rich comes in, lays out a stack and says, hey, we need to bring something in here. That was Spring Source. So that was an open source project. It was Talk a, about your role in open Spring Source. Yeah, so I, I ran engineering at Spring Source and, and the acquisition by VMware was really a big game changer for VMware, right? Because uh, it's the first time they really did a big acquisition and stepped out of the infrastructure space into apps. Um, so, you know, on both sides of that, it was a lot of a lot, lot of things to get right during that, you know, that transition. Um, but going back, you know, Spring was really built around open source projects and, you know, working in the community and then assembling a platform out of open source components to to basically meet enterprise customer needs. Um, so some of the same you know, challenges apply there. What did you there. learn at Spring Source? Because really Spring Source was, I mean open source is growing, I'm calling it third generation open source because you got more than enough to call it third generation. But you know, yep. post Unix, Linux, whatever you want to call version of that you know, stuff coming out of BSD you know, history and Unix. Um, it was successful. You guys are attracted a lot of talent at Spring Source. You did a lot of value. At the same time, you balance the contributions to open source. 
What did you learn in that experience? And how, how to balance a commercial operation and right. be a, an actor and a participant in right. a community? Right, that's the trick, right? I mean, all same thing at, at Spring Source as we've got here at Cloudera, which is, you know, it's all about the open source community that you're building off of and the contributions to that community, participating in the community. Um, you've got to do that and um, be a good citizen. And um, if you're successful in doing that, you know, you can move the innovation forward in those projects and, and contribute to do that. But the trick is you've got to balance that with paying the rent and keeping the lights on, right? So uh, there's a lot of customers that need to be taken care of and, you know, making those trade-offs between, you know, what does this customer need versus what's the right thing to do for the open source, you know, can be challenging. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I'm really interested in. So. Where uh, have you seen companies, and you don't have to name names, but uh, where people have failed um, being successful in open source? What have you noticed if you look at the carnage well, and some of the wreckage? I mean, what you see is, you know, if you see companies that sort of, uh, they'll make a contribution to open source, but it's not a real commitment, right? And, or they might put something out there that they're not really committed to. And, you know, they'll start a project and then put it out in open source as an afterthought. You know, the right way to do it is to really be involved, have the project in the open from the start, let the community be involved, you contribute. Uh, and it's a partnership, right? And so, you know, there's a real difference between building something in the open source and just kind of putting something out there. I was talking with Eli Collins, who's a, um, one of the early engineers uh, at uh, Cloudera. He's also ex-VMware. Yeah. Um, and we'll come back to your VMware experience because it's a kind of interesting story. You got open source with Spring Source, then you go with the, the commercial entity VMware, which is owned by EMC. Um, so I want to talk about that. But let's talk about what Eli and I were talking earlier in the hallway. I, I said, you know, Eli, what are you working on now? And after we were talking about all these changes, and uh, this is a lot of, a lot of code. Uh, the volume of, of shipping is high. Um, at, what, what, at, at Cloudera, Cloudera yeah. yeah. I mean, they're constantly shipping updates and, and changes. Um, what did you think of that? I mean, were well, you blown part, away by that? Yeah, well, I mean, partly, it's partly because there's a very active open source community, Apache community around, you know, the, the Hadoop projects. So, you can do a lot more, right? And there's a, you know, there's a lot of activity and there's a lot of pieces that need to be assembled. Um, and part of the value that Cloudera brings, right, is you've got to assemble those components, um, test them, and make sure that they're going to, you know, meet the enterprise software bar. And uh, part of what, you know, I think Eli's talking about there is that, you know, when you have a lot of customers, as Cloudera does today, uh, you got a lot of different people with different needs, and you know, in not all cases, the open source doesn't necessarily meet their needs, so you have to tweak it or do something special. And then the trick is, that's got to go back into the open source and be integrated. So when you rolled into VMware from Spring Source, obviously different culture. VMware is, you know, very commercial focused. Um, great technical people as well. Um, what did you do yeah. there? Any was it different? Uh, what well, projects I mean, did you work you on know, there? I mean, at, at VMware it was, you know, we were also managing the open source com project Spring, mm -hmm. um, but also we had some commercial software that we brought in through acquisitions in the later stages of uh, Spring Source. So again, it was a balance between the open source and, and working in the open source community. Did you have a chance to have some successes in that new oh, engineering absolutely. environment? Yeah, absolutely. Can you I mean, can share with the folks some well, of the projects? Well, I mean, you know, we brought some, uh, uh, you know, the, the spring the spring framework projects. You know, a huge community. Of, you know, millions of users around Spring, and we were able to introduce some runtime components uh, into that platform. Uh, and take those to market as part of a suite which we introduced at, at VMware. And uh, the, the idea you know, with VMware was to bring the, that community of developers onto the VMware platform and then uh, use the VMware channel to introduce that platform to a broader market. And you know, it was very successful. So. Okay, so you know, my final question is: We got some, you know, our next guest lining up. I can see them all queuing up, like uh, airplanes at the airport on a rainy day. <laughs> um, why did Cloudera want you? What was the reason for the new VP of higher engine? Was it the fact that there's just like, so much work to do that is now, you know, I'm not saying Amr didn't work full time, but I mean, I know he's super busy doing a lot of evangelist work and business is growing like crazy. What was the core thing? Was it like, okay, 
uh, Peter, we need you to run ops? Is it more just, you know, keeping the yes. troops trains run on time? Was it more different perspective from, because in fact you have the open source thing, all of the above, what well, was the? You know, I think the part that it really, really goes back to is, you know, Mike's got this vision and Armour's got the same vision of building a, a team that's really built to last, right? And uh, they wanted somebody who had built teams successfully before, um, that could help that team make those trade-offs and grow and you know build a, a team that could really uh, carry a large engineering initiative and a large customer base forward. It's a large so operation now. You're talking big. about schedules, you balancing yeah. the open source, yeah. and you know they got to actually ship some code, commercial yeah, yeah, code. Absolutely. They got the core Cloudera products. Yeah, and it's you know it's an exceptional team. I mean, I've yeah. spent a lot of time interviewing with these guys, and you know. They're a great team. I'm sure um, they're going to get higher too, more numbers. And sure, you, know, you have absolutely. a full organization, you got an organizational behavior strategy, you got to have you know, and, you know, succession you gotta strategy. Preserve that culture, right? The, these guys have set a, you know, an amazing culture. Set um, objectives. You've got to, you've gotta, you know, maintain that culture and allow the team to scale up uh, without losing the good stuff that you had when you're in the startup. What have you learned as an ex engineering manager executive um, is the best practice in your mind? What's your philosophy on, on how to manage a team? Because you know, you got a lot of young guys coming in, you have a lot of young experience and a lot of, I mean, younger guys coming in, you have experienced guys in there. Um, you got to set you know, reviews, you got to keep people on yeah. schedule. Yeah. What's I mean, your philosophy in herding the cats, as some say, <laughs> you know? Um, and these guys are wild cards too, the open source guys. You know how, you know how they are out there. Um, they're they're uh, they, they're good citizens, but at the same time, you know they're right. they got causes. They they really truly it's passionate. So the thing about, you heard those cats? so people who are passionate respond to the same. You know, I, my experience is people who are passionate respond to you know the, the same things that you know I respond to, which is you know be who you you know do what you say you're going to do and follow through and you know be yourself. Um, and provide leadership by, you know, example. Um, I've built these products before, you know, um, been around these kind of teams, and, and um, a lot of it is just, you know, staying focused, staying with the program, recognizing people for their contribution, allowing people to grow, you know, uh, giving them exposure to different opportunities. It sounds so simple, it really does. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. A lot of it comes back to the simple stuff, I think. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, Peter Cooper Ellis, the new VP of Engineering at Cloudera. Welcome inside theCUBE for the first time. Thank you. Great to have you. It's Good luck with here. everything. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks.